We're here to talk through this Minesweeper Pentomino called Tightly Pack that I wrote. And as we get started, I'm just going to uh, speak to two different ways you can go about this puzzle. And one way is probably the way very few people actually went about the puzzle. But if I had made this even harder in the local sense, this would be a key global constraint to observe. My guess is people would eventually run into this constraint in the grid, but it's just an interesting pattern seen at the start. And other designers have used this layout before, so not going to claim brilliance in this. Uh, but this has to do with just understanding some properties of the pentominoes. A lot of the pentomino shapes can fit pretty well into a, a packing where they're always dodging blue squares like U and V and L and I and Y and stuff like that. But there are pentominoes that, that almost require um, bending in a, in a quick shape. The actual specific pattern that matters is an S-tetromino, but it's even let's go to the furthest extreme and say, where can a P pentomino sit in this grid? A P can't be anywhere near where a blue cell is filled with numbers, but a, a P can be here, uh, whether it's taking that two by two square. And where that says P is special in this pattern, the actual global constraint to think about is, is every pentomino that has an S tetromino shape within it is special in this pattern. Where can an N go? Well, an N can't go over here because it always collide with a blue cell. But if you can take exactly this blue cell, you can put a lot of Ns into the grid. And so these cells that are, are breaking the pattern, but these cells that are required to put in that shape are how an N fits into the grid. They're also how a W eventually fits in the grid. There are several different Ws that can go around a cell as long as you can take um, this thing that's, that's able to reach into a two by two box and put an S, pentom uh, sorry, S tetromino into the grid. So the P, the N, the F, and the W are four pentominoes that have this key constraint. And a global uh, requirement in this puzzle is that these four cells are shaded, and these four cells will be where the F, N, P, and W split somehow across the grid. So if, if you're curious about how to play out the puzzle, if you saw that global constraint, you can go about solving it that way. Um, in an earlier, much harder version of a puzzle, that was almost a required observation. I, I wanted to get back to this having some more approachability, although you might run into that deduction. So that's the grid you see here. And in this grid, I really used the center with these diagonal packings to give a different example of how Minesweeper clues work. And so a key starting point is the exact center. Um, we've got cells like these two around this four clue and these two around the four clue where you should be able to observe that you get one but not both of these in blue. They're diagonally adjacent. They can't be part of the same pentomino because of the other cells around them. So you get one in blue, one in red. That leaves behind the need to get two more. And so these are going to be part of pentominoes for sure. Uh, the same logic actually works across uh, this four uh, with these kinds of cells and marking in these three. And uh, strictly speaking, um, af after we fill more in, there'll be a little bit of this that plays further down to the south um, on the bottom side of the puzzle. But having marked these in, also with constraints around the puzzle, this pentomino has to start going out, this has to go out, this has to go out, a little bit to start there. The next thing to recognize is where we say that one of these two cells in pink has to be uh, a part of a, a pentomino. It means that around this one, these other two cells are not part of pentomino. So green, where the other colors are still in the grid, green will always be my non-pentomino uh, color. Um, what it means is where these are not uh, used based on this four, or this other clue, this is not used based on that four. And so the first firm deduction in the grid is actually we can complete this one by taking this top cell. And marking that in, we'll make a new situation where around this three, we take one of these two cells. And with this cell and this cell, we then get three around this, this pentomino. So we're going to have to use the coloring and coloring and coloring to finish these. But we actually now have also completed this two with these two cells marked. So this has at least two more coming out from here. This has at least this extra coming out from here. And this also has one more uh, for sure coming out from there. That now sets up a tension, which is probably, if, if you haven't called into the global constraint yet, probably the key one to, to use at this stage, which is to look at a clue like this one clue, which can't have a lot around it. Actually, if I had more of the penpa options open, I could put sort of X's on the edges. There's a way I can shade one, but not both of these cells. So if I took this cell, I have to quickly get away from the one. Notice that the four right above it is now also effectively a one clue, and the four just to the down and right of it is also effectively one clue. So I took this cell, I complete the four, and I also complete the one clue, and that's isolated. So this cell is impossible to use. Um, this cell has the same issue. It's between two one clues. It would mark off these as impossible, mark off this as impossible, and now this cell is isolated. So um, 
uh, we get at least the first local version of the global constraint, which is the cell that is in the, the, the magic two by two box around these clues has to be shaded in. That finishes the four. We can now see that this four has one of its two cells to go, and that will be the same cell that this two clue will use to finish it. So whether it's this cell or that cell. And if we look up above, this four is gonna get one more cell potentially from where this pentomino grows, but it's gonna be in one of these two cells. So here we have three, we can take one more down, we can take one more up, but that's gonna complete this clue and that clue. So this we know for sure finishes this four. One or either of these, but we don't know for sure will be the last. And what we should now do is look at this two and say, are there roots that finish this uh, shape out that do not take the cell? I took this cell, this would be the last around the two would mark that off, so this is no good. If I took this cell, it would mark everything else around the two off, so also no good, because this is effectively now just a value one clue. So this is the only cell to think about, and it's running into a two clue, which means we can go two cells into a pentomino, but we can't take a third, so this cell is also dead. And so uh, the T pentomino is one of the first ones you can place for sure in the grid. That marks off this cell, which means we absolutely take this cell to the right for this four to complete. That marks this as unusable, shades in our next global constraint cell, diagonal off of this two. So we're gonna gradually get all of these four cells marked in. Uh, this has to keep growing out. Uh, it could take one to the left, but this could be a second, third, fourth for that pentomino. This finishes the four. Take a fifth, and we don't know if it's an N or a W, but we've got these marked in. This can't take this diagonal cell. We can take one of these cells around the three, but notice whichever we take, we're gonna to need to have a pentomino that's coming around this two. So let's start to mark what that might look like. It will have to take this cell. It can take one of these, but not more. And then it's gonna take two, three, four. And so now it's gotta be the last of these. It's either the V or the U, but it's gonna be finishing that shape out. Uh, and if it were the U, it's gonna complete an N here. And that looks valid to date. But what we wanna do is start to mark other things around it, which will start to clarify. So let's come to this four clue at the top. It can't use this cell because this would then require these to connect and add be larger than the pentomino, so this is off. So it can take as many as three through these cells on the left. So we'll always have to use this cell to get up to four. That now means for this to grow out, it's gonna take one more, one more. And uh, what, we, I, what I skipped over, but when I marked in that the four was finished, we actually also finished this pentomino shape, which is an X, so I'll mark that in. Um, the three is now complete. We have a case where this two has one cell to go and this four clue has one cell to go. So the cell again is bad for the reasons it would quickly eliminate those. So this again gets to that diagonal cell to it in the, the global pattern shape. Um, and this will have to grow out uh, by marking those in. We see this five has to become the U that comes back over here and says this isn't a U. So this is a V that means this is out, this is a W. So these shapes are all known for sure. This pentomino is going to come to the right to keep growing. It can come down and take exactly one cell. That would finish the two and the four. Actually, the four here is um, effectively going to, one of these cells will finish out this clue, but this is going to have to come up. Uh, this right now takes three cells. It could take a fourth up here, um, but what it can't do is take more in this direction. And what you'll see is this three pentomino clue in the upper right can't have another shape around it. So we're actually at a moment where the remaining shaded cells for this clue must come from the shape and where we can take at most one above we can take this to the right that finishes this puts this in so we get an rf um, the two is finished by marking this in we already have a t in the grid to the left so this is a z so you put this in that marks off this cell uh, we can mark that this can't be used this is complete based off the four this three needs to get at least one two, two more total cells marked but always this cell and this will have to come down the chute get as many as three from this. This four is gonna take one of these cells, but here like it could start to be useful to mark um, what pentominoes we have left. And uh, uh, I guess I will try to do more without doing that immediately. But uh, one thing to see for sure is where we can get one, two around the space. We'll always be taking um, uh, where we can only take one of these. Let me mark those in blue. We always take at least one of these, and that's going to complete the, the, this clue in two. So whichever in red we take, we'll finish this out. And uh, that now means where we have this four, this four will have to take some of these uh, clues for sure, and we need to get one uh, cell shaded from this two above. And so whatever is intersecting here, if, for instance, these two are taken, we take one more from above. Notice it's not intersecting with this shape. 
And so uh, these four are going to join to a pentomino above, which means the cell is unreachable. And so what we're going to have is some stretch where the four cells stretch across, reach up to the space. We actually have now finished this four and how we've done that. So what reaches up into the space is an end pentomino, which will complete these out. It actually will mark off uh, this pattern. So put this in the grid, but we have an L or I left. We don't know which of these yet, but looking at the four clue, it's got to be the L. Got these in. Uh, we have one more option around the five. It's this top clue or this bottom clue. If it's this bottom clue, it's going to force an L and a V in the pattern, but that's going to cause an issue over to the right. So it's got to be the top one and not the bottom one. So mark this in. This is going to finish a Y shape. And we have one more cell to fill that touches this four. So we'll put this in. This clue has to extend to the cell to be part of any pentomino. It can't join to this one. So this is an I on the bottom. If we actually looked at our shape inventory, we'd see that we have to place a P in the grid. And for sure, that finishes the puzzle. So um, different ways to look through the grid, different ways to think about the pentomino constraints. I was trying in this video through the local uh, rules to mostly focus on Minesweeper type constraints and the diagonally adjacent cells that are pinched off by two uh, number clues were some of the key points, including the starting break in with this cell right above the one, some different constraints around this one in the lower left, which then got us clockwise around the grid to place the remaining pentominoes in some way. So I hope you got some different uh, techniques or at least approaches to use to a puzzle like this. Obviously there's some minesweeper, there's some pentomino packing, there are different things to be thinking about. But often through these hybrid puzzles, you can be learning uh, the different approaches from the two different starting points for the grids and that will get you more versatile as a puzzle solver in general. So thanks for watching this video and we'll see you again soon.